Hey, it's Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at what adjustment layers are and how they work. In previous videos, we saw how layers can be used to add individual objects to a Photoshop Elements document so that it could be moved or altered without affecting other parts of the image. Adjustment layers are a different kind of layer. They don't contain parts of a photo like other layers might. Instead, they let you apply changes to the layers that are underneath them in the Layers panel. What kind of changes do they let you apply? Various kinds of changes to the colors and tones of an image. Or, I should say, changes to the color and tone of other layers in the Layers panel. Let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer to better see how they work. First, we'll click and drag the Layers panel by its top tab bar and move it closer to the photo so we can better see what's going on. And then I'm just going to click and drag from the lower right hand corner to open up the layers panel a little bit. This half white half gray circle is the create a new fill or adjustment layer icon and when you click on it you see 11 different options. The top three choices solid color, gradient, and pattern will all create a fill layer but I'm not going to cover those in this video because I want us to focus on the next eight options which are all options for adjustment layers and are much more commonly used. Let's click on the first one which is levels and when you do you'll see that the adjustments panel appears in the panels bin over on the right side. I'm gonna move that over too so it's easier to see. Also, notice in the Layers panel a new layer appeared above the background layer and it has a layer mask with it. So we have the Levels Adjustment panel. If you're familiar with Levels, you'll notice that the Levels Adjustment panel is very similar to the Levels dialog box. Let's actually open the Levels dialog box and look at them side by side. So go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting and then click on Levels and the Levels dialog box appears. I'll move that right over next to the Adjustment Levels panel and you can see they have pretty much the same controls and information in each one. Now let's close the Layers dialog box by clicking on the Cancel button. I just wanted you to see that they're basically the same. So why even have Adjustment Layers? Let's throw away our adjustment layer for now so we can see how we could make a levels change without an adjustment layer. So I'll drag that down to the trash. Go up to the Enhance menu again and choose Adjust Lighting and click on Levels like we did before and the Levels dialog box appears. And let's make a couple quick moves. We'll move the shadow slider over to about 30 and then let's move the highlight slider over to 240. I'm going to move the levels dialog box down a little bit here. This is a typical contrast move you might make with levels. At this point if we clicked OK and saved the photo that would be a permanent change that we made to the photo by altering the pixels. We don't want to do that, so let's click on Cancel so our photo goes back to how it was originally. One common way to make our levels change without permanently altering the pixels in the photo is to duplicate the background layer and then apply the change to the duplicate layer. That way we still have the original safely intact on the background layer. I'm going to close the Adjustments panel. You can do that by clicking on the little close box in the upper left hand corner. Now let's duplicate the background layer by dragging it onto the Create New Layer icon in the Layers panel. Now with the background copy layer active, we can tell it's active because it's highlighted in blue. Go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting again and click on Levels. When the Levels dialog box appears, let's enter the same values as we did before, which was 30 for the shadows and 240 in the highlight area. 
and then click OK to accept the change and close the dialog box. So we've applied the levels change to our background copy layer and our original background layer remains safely untouched underneath it in the layers panel if we ever wanted to get back to the original state. And finally let's make the levels adjustment using an adjustment layer. First I'll throw away the background copy layer. Just drag it into the trash of the layers panel. And now click on the create new fill or adjustment layer icon and click on levels in the drop down list. A levels adjustment layer appears in the layers panel and the levels adjustment appears in the adjustments panel. And that's where we make our changes. I'll apply the same values as before, about 30 in the shadows, close enough, and 240 in the highlights. Now let's say we don't like how bright the photo got by the sun. Well, we can paint that area with black on the layer mask that comes with the adjustment layer. If you don't know how layer masks work, watch the video I made about layer masks, which you'll find on my website, EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. There's a search box where you can search for layer masks, and then you'll see it. So let's grab the brush tool from the toolbox, and that's right here. And we want to conceal the levels adjustment in that area and make sure that black is your foreground color because the brush tool uses whatever color the foreground color is to paint with. My foreground color currently is black but if it were white like that you can just press the X key on your keyboard and it will switch it to black. This is all explained in the layers mask video that I mentioned earlier. Okay now go up to the options bar and click on the brush preview to open the drop-down window to see the other brush choices. I'm going to choose a soft edged brush 45 pixels in diameter. And then click on the little close box to close this window. You can quickly adjust your brush size by pressing the left or right bracket keys on your keyboard. They're located right next to the letter P as in Peter. And if I press the, let me get my cursor over in a lighter area, if I press the left bracket key my brush gets smaller and each time I press the right bracket key it gets larger. So I'm just going to paint with black on my layer mask around this area where the sun is. And also if you want to see the difference between what your photo looked like before the, the levels adjustment layer and what it looks like now, you can just click off and on this eyeball next to your adjustment layer. So there's before and there's after. Now to save a photo with an adjustment layer it has to be saved as a Photoshop format sometimes referred to as PSD or as a TIFF format because those are the only two formats that support layers. I'll go up to the file menu and choose save as. and it defaults to the Photoshop format. And if you change the format from the drop-down menu to JPEG, you'll get this yellow warning symbol next to the layers box. And it explains that the file must be saved as a copy with this selection. I'll go ahead and click Save. And notice in the layers panel it got rid of our adjustment layer it did apply our levels move but if we do it this way it's the same as when we applied the levels move right to the background layer it permanently changes the pixels and you can't get back to the original version I don't want to do it that way so I'm gonna click on cancel and this time I'm going to click save when it's in Photoshop format so we'll say save as again it's in Photoshop format and I'll say save and you can see the name change to having a .psd at the end of it and our adjustment layer is still in the layers panel. Now let's close the photo by clicking on the close box and if I go up to the file menu and choose open recently edited files 
it shows both the JPEG and the .psd files. Let's open the PSD version back up. And the adjustment layer is still there, and the adjustments panel shows the settings we applied. And we can go in there and change those settings however we want. It will change the appearance accordingly, but keep every original pixel of our photo safely intact on the background layer. Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the three different methods we use to make a levels contrast move to this photo because I think it will help you understand the way adjustment layers work and what their advantages are. So with our first method, we go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting and choose Levels. And the Levels dialog box appears and you make your adjustments and the adjustment that you make in the Levels dialog box is applied to the background layer, permanently altering its pixels. In the second method that we did, we click and drag the background layer onto the Create a New Layer icon, and a new duplicate layer called Background Copy will appear. You go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting and click on Levels. The Levels dialog box appears and you make your Levels adjustments. The adjustments are applied to the background copy layer, permanently altering the background copy pixels. And finally, in the Adjustment Layer method, we click on the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon and from the drop-down menu choose Levels. The Levels Adjustment panel appears and you make your Levels Adjustment. The Levels Adjustment layer appears in the Layers panel above the background layer. And no pixels are permanently altered, the adjustment can be easily changed, and the Adjustment layer has a layer mask. So let's look at the advantage or disadvantage of each of these methods. Method 1, the adjustment that you make in the Levels dialog box is applied to the background layer, permanently altering its pixels. With Method 2, the adjustments are applied to the background copy layer, permanently altering the background copy pixels, but the background layer is safely untouched in the Layers panel so it is more flexible than method 1. And method 3, using adjustment layers, the advantages are that no pixels are permanently altered, the adjustment can be easily changed, and the adjustment layer has a layer mask. I hope you're starting to see and understand some of the benefits of using adjustment layers. And we only looked at a levels adjustment layer. Remember, there are eight different adjustment layers to choose from depending on what you want to do with your photo. So start playing around with these to get the hang of how they work. Don't worry, you won't break anything. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.